Welcome back to FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. Intelligence and terrorism analysts say there is no evidence that the group Islamic State could launch an attack on the United States. But the airwaves are full of talk about threats to the homeland, rhetoric that certainly has something to do with U.S. public support for war in Iraq and Syria. ABC World News was sounding the alarm on September 10th. The new and troubling alert, the head of Homeland Security, and here in New York, the police commissioner, both now warning the risk of a terror attack is at its highest in years. No specific plot, but the rise of ISIS and all of their messages through social media now raising the level of concern. Correspondent Pierre Thomas took it from there. But sources say, make no mistake, ISIS potentially poses a new dynamic threat to the U.S. How dynamic? ABC includes a clip of New York City Police Commissioner Bill Bratton warning that the group could be more dangerous than Al-Qaeda. Not scary enough? Thomas closes with this. Also today, Homeland Security Secretary Jay Johnson said that ISIS had the most sophisticated social media and internet messaging system ever designed by a terrorist organization. That means they can reach people directly in the U.S. and encourage them to attack. Dangerous times, David. Absolutely. Again, there doesn't seem to be any hard evidence for all of this. But when the point is to whip up support for a war, fear-mongering is more important. As many have noted, the idea that the U.S. must do something about ISIS seems to only mean dropping bombs. CBS host Bob Schieffer couldn't be any clearer. Yes, America is weary of war. But when fires break out, we fight them before they spread, not when it is convenient. We have no choice now. Whatever it takes, and as the president said, however long it takes, this evil must be eradicated. These forces must be destroyed. Schieffer is the host of a discussion show. So when he says there's no choice but to go to war, we shouldn't expect his show to feature much debate on the issue. And even when the issue is being debated, there's little debate. On the PBS NewsHour, Mark Shields plays the left to David Brooks's right. On the September 12th broadcast, Shields was adamant that there needed to be a healthy debate about war. Here was his contribution. I mean, airstrikes are wonderful. They're antiseptic. They're at a distance. Uh, the possibility of your own casualties is finite. Uh, but they, they don't occupy. You can't occupy a, a nation uh, or bring order and stability by airstrikes. So who are the people on the ground? Who is the coalition? Where are the troops coming from? So the left position on the war is that airstrikes are wonderful, but don't we need ground troops too? There has to be a way to have a healthier debate than that. And finally, a new study links the controversial gas drilling technique known as fracking with water contamination, something that critics of fracking have been warning about for years. But you got a different message from some corporate media outlets. Take a look at this New York Times headline. And they weren't the only ones that spun the findings to let fracking off the hook. The Times and USA Today emphasized that the gas leaks fouling up the water weren't coming from the gas escaping from the fractured rock. The problem, according to the study, is the failure to properly seal the wells used in the drilling process. Okay, but how does that translate into these fracking didn't do it headlines? Those wells only exist because of fracking. And contrary to the implication that environmentalists were wrong about this, there's already been research linking the problem of polluted water to faulty cement in the wells. The Times doesn't help much when it notes that faulty cement was also key in the BP Deepwater Horizon oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. By the logic they're using here, that would mean we shouldn't blame that disaster on deep water oil drilling. Of course, that's absurd, but that's exactly what they're trying to do here to convince readers that fracking-linked water contamination isn't linked to fracking. I'm Janine Jackson. Thanks for watching FAIR TV.